Hey everyone, my name is Laura. I'm the CEO of Fire and Steel. We're a weaponry specialty company here in Canada. And today we're going to be analyzing a fight sequence in TV show, movie, I'm not really sure what was selected for me this week, but let's get into it. Ooh, so this is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's a classic movie. And it seems like the sequence that I'm watching is the is probably the best sequence in the movie. I remember watching this as a young girl. It's the fight sequence between Zi Zhang and Michelle Yao's character. And it's the Green Destiny versus a Chinese traditional Dao held by Michelle Yao. What you see right there is classic Dao movement. You can only do this movement, it's called a head wrap, where you wrap it around your body multiple times and then go in um, for a counter strike. The wrapping movement that Michelle Yao's character does multiple times in succession, it's basically a defensive movement where you're wrapping the sword around to protect yourself and then going immediately for a counter strike. It's done really, really quickly in succession here for a cinematic effect, but it's fantastic. I, I love the way she uses it effectively. What's great about this clip is how it highlights the difference in how a straight sword is used versus a broadsword is used, especially double broadswords. Double broadswords are more slashing weapons, so you'll see a lot more side to side and circular movements, whereas Jian are more piercing weapons. Um, you won't see the same hack slash type of movements from the Jian as you would from the Dao. So what happened is that she's now switched her weapons. So the fantastic thing about this fight sequence is that it actually cycles through, depending on who you ask for, there's actually 23 weapons in Wushu Kung Fu. Uh, depending on who you ask, it could be more or less than that. But Michelle Yao has just switched from a single Dao to a double Dao setup to fight the Green Destiny. In this movie, the Green Destiny is a legendary sword. So the legendary status of it being that it's supposed to be able to destroy all other weapons. That very fast movement when she took it off the stand was a spear flower. The director is amazing for highlighting the way the spear moves very differently from other weapons. And so he shot this from above so that he can highlight the figure eight style movements that we're taught in Kung Fu basics classes to be able to disguise where your strike will land. The red tassel is supposedly used to distract the opponent on the spear. So this is a very, very classic and traditional spear. A lot of times when fight sequences are filmed, they're sped up slightly, so they don't go this fast regularly. This has been extremely well choreographed and rehearsed. Oh my gosh. Her stunt double is incredible. <laughs> So now she's switched to something called the Shaolin Twin Hooks. And what's incredible about the Shaolin Twin Hooks is her ability to use them right here in this sequence to chain them so they become a chain weapon. The hooks of this blade are used to hook into the opponent, but not only that, they're used to trap opponent's weapons, as you can see she does right here. So. These are Shaolin Twin Hooks. Like I was saying, I really wanted to highlight how special these blades are. These are among my most favorite weapons because of how they've historically been developed. So these are weapons used by Shaolin monks. They're typically produced to be dual wielded. So the crazy thing is 
the sheer number of cutting surfaces on this. This is obviously a replica set. It's blunted, so it's not incredibly apparent from this set, but there's actually a cutting surface here. There's cutting surfaces here. This is actually supposed to be sharpened down here. There's cutting surfaces here, and there's a full cutting surface here as well. As well, depending on the version you buy, there might be a cutting surface back here as well. So the craziest thing about this, this weapon is that it's made to be a hybrid weapon. What that means is that when you link them together, and that is the purpose of the hooks, by the way, they're meant to be linked together so that when they're chained together and swung around, these become chain weapons. When they become chain weapons, they allow you two times the reach. So suddenly these cutting surfaces at the end, they're at the handle, they become your main cutting surface at that point, And it becomes almost like a swung ax. These pommels at the end are almost like spear tips. So you'll actually realize that when you flip it around, when you flip it around, it actually resembles a halberd, a typical Chinese halberd. The surface here is almost like an ax head. And this surface here is a spear point. So it perfectly hybridizes, um, basically a Jian shape, hybridizes it to be combined with the halberd head. And the hooks allow it to be basically combined together to have the versatility of a chain weapon. So these are considered among the most advanced weapons to be wielded. And she's even shot them back at Zizang now. This weapon is called the Monk's Spade. And uh, the funny thing about this is that the version they chose to use in the movie is just really, really heavy. It seems like it might have ma been made out of solid steel. I think that's incredibly funny because in the sequence she just drops it. And it reminds me of um, when we would train with weapons in our Kung Fu school. Uh, we often would have long pole weapons that are way too heavy for us to carry. Especially for me, I'm not used to carrying really, really long pole weapons that are weighted at the end really heavily. So I would do probably something similar to her. So she goes like... And then she just gives up. That reminds me of me, probably. Those are called flowers. And earlier I referenced Michelle Yao's character doing a flower with a spear. So whenever you do that circular movement around your body, it's called a flower. And you can do that with most weapons. And yeah, typical of Chinese, um, it's called wuxia films. There's a lot of use of wire work, so they're like floating around a lot. That's just typical of this genre. Oh man. And this sequence makes me laugh a lot because they're really exaggerating the swing, swing, swing sounds here. It makes me laugh so hard because as a weapon seller, you know that swords don't make that sound whenever they strike something or they like. A lot of times, it's very special circumstances when they make the swing, swing, swing sound. And it seems like whenever a weapon is unsheathed or whenever it swings around, it always makes a swing, swing, swing sound in movies. So this is just an exaggeration of that sound. There's no way, just looking at the way this blade was constructed, I can already see there's no way that it would have cut through this thick cudgel of wood. There's no way that this could have happened in real life. Like no matter how sharp this thing is, the blade is way too, it's, it's not constructed in a way that would actually do that much damage. So obviously this is exaggerated for film. So this is now, the final fight. It's straight sword versus straight sword. It's called Jian. Chinese straight swords are considered gentlemen's weapons. So the green destiny being a Chinese straight sword. A 
I just love the choreography. It's it's like artwork. Just watching two people dance. It's so intricate. It's so well done. The attention to detail. And just as I suspected, if you pause the video here, you can actually see that the sword is blunted. So that's the end of the sequence, and you can see with the way the one sword broke the other sword, I believe the Green Destiny slashed through this Chinese straight sword, and it ends with Michelle Yao putting the other throat at Yi Zhang's character's throat. The, the way the sword broke, it's clearly purely Hollywood. The way that this was slashed apart, there's absolutely no way that could have happened like that in real life. So this is clearly um, a very Hollywood-esque fight sequence, but it was fantastically choreographed. It was very well done. I love the detailing in the footwork and in the, the weapons movements and everything. This is one of my favorite fight sequences of all time. So it's an absolute pleasure for me to be analyzing this right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and check out the links in the description. You'll be able to find links for all our social media. And as always, if there's another fight sequence you want me to take a look at, please suggest that in the comment section. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And see you guys next time.